An entitled Karen tries to steal my seat on a plane by creating a fake plane ticket with a fake seat number. Things got so bad that the stewardess had to get involved just to settle the matter. Here's what happened. So, for a bit of context, I love to do volunteer work. I like volunteering in general and working with kids, and I want to see the world. So this combines all of those things, and is generally a cheaper way to travel. For this particular outing, my sister wanted to come along for the trip with me. My sister and I went to work in Peru for a week over Thanksgiving break. The mother of my sister's best friend is a supposed travel agent, and that's a loose term if anything. So when I wanted to book the flights, my sister insisted on her friend's mom. Instead of a direct flight, this lady booked us on three flights both ways. She got my sister a window or aisle seat on all six flights and put me in the middle seat on all of the flights as well. She didn't even ask if I would have cared having someone sit between us. My sister is also half a foot shorter than me, so I can use the leg room. On the way back, I even asked her if she would trade me for one flight, and she said no. My sister is a bit selfish and just doesn't understand what it means to sacrifice for other people. So anyways, we got to one location where we had a two-hour layover. I figured it was worth a shot trying to talk to the gate person and seeing what they could do. I asked if there were any seats on the plane that wasn't in the middle. She checked and said that there was one open one in the same aisle as my sister, so we could actually still sit together. And when I heard this, I was thrilled. So she printed my new ticket with my new seat on it. My sister had the window seat like she preferred, and I had the aisle seat like I preferred. Everything was right in the world. After a couple of hours, we boarded the plane. We got to our row, and my sister goes in first. We're both just sitting there when a woman comes by and says that she's sitting in our aisle. I get up so she has room to get in and doesn't have to try and scoot past us just to get to her seat. Or so I assumed. We said hello, and we exchanged a smile. And that's when this entitled Karen flipped a switch and decided to go full crazy on me. She looks at me and says, you can go in now. I looked at her and I was a little confused. So I said, oh, I actually have the aisle seat, realizing that she was probably thinking that she was sitting where I was sitting. This entitled Karen then said, okay, then she, pointing at my sister, should get out of the aisle so I can sit at the window seat. Now, the entire time she was making these demands, she had a weird smile on her face, as if all of this was completely fine. So after I explained to her that she can't do that because that's her seat, she then says, okay, then I'll just take the aisle seat. And the entire time she's still smiling and acting like all of this is totally normal. So I said, I'm sorry, but I'm a little confused. My sister has the window seat and I have the aisle. And then all of a sudden, this entitled Karen acted so exhausted with the situation and pretended basically that we're stupid. Look, I'm willing to take either the aisle or the window. You can sit next to your sister either way. She then started smiling again as if she's doing us a favor. I explained to her my situation and I said that I exchanged my ticket so I could have the aisle seat. And at this point, we're just standing in the aisle, blocking people boarding the plane. Eventually, the stewardess comes over and asks what is happening. And this entitled Karen chimes in before I even have the chance and makes the claim that I'm not moving to my seat. So I hold up my ticket and I say, my ticket has me sitting at 23C, which puts me in the aisle seat. But this entitled Karen chimes in and holds up her ticket that also says that she has 23C. So at this point, I'm thinking that maybe there was a mistake with the airline and the seat wasn't really open and the gate agent printed me a new ticket, but this woman had the same seat on her ticket. We both got our tickets out and handed them to the stewardess. I hand her mine first, clearly showing that it says 23C, and then I noticed the entitled Karen's ticket. I don't know what was written on it originally, but she had crossed out her seat number and written in pen that she has 23C on the ticket. It was very clear that my ticket was real and hers was entirely fabricated. I explained again to this stewardess that I exchanged my middle seat for the aisle seat before I got on the plane. And that is when this entitled Karen exploded. I can't sit in the middle. I'm even willing to take the window seat. You should be sitting with your sister anyways. At this point, the stewardess clearly wanted to take care of this as fast as possible because it was holding up the entire plane. She told the lady she could find a new seat, but she couldn't have one that was already assigned. This entitled Karen was then begrudgingly taken to a new seat near the very back of the plane. I politely shifted into the row so she could get her bag down to move to the new overhead holder. She gave me and my sister the stink eye and aggressively grabbed the bag. Once she started walking to the back, she turned her stink eye to the stewardess, who kindly found her a non-middle seat and was nothing but polite. Me and my sister ended up with our window and aisle seat. And even better, nobody sat in the middle. We had a bunch of extra room, we didn't have to share the armrests, and we were able to put our bag in the empty seat. My sister had been looking away the whole time because she's so shy and can't deal with 
with confrontation. Once the woman had walked far enough away, she finally smiled at me and we joked a little about all the space we finally had. And to top it all off, I didn't see any other rows with an empty seat. So to be honest, we really lucked out. Later in the flight, my sister went to the bathroom at one point and when she came back, she said that she saw the lady sitting at almost the last row and was pretty squished in. So next time, this entitled Karen should probably not try to forge a ticket just to try and steal somebody's seat. I gotta be honest, you've gotta be pretty dumb to think you can get away with that on an airplane. This entitled Karen really thought she would get away with writing down a new seat on her plane ticket to try and steal the seat from the original poster. That is such a toxic thing to do. Hopefully this entitled Karen learned her lesson and doesn't try to steal someone else's plane ticket just to fit her own selfish needs. This next one came from the Am I the Jerk podcast subreddit. Check the links in the description if you'd like to submit your own stories. Am I the jerk for ignoring my boyfriend the day of my mother's funeral? My boyfriend and I just got into a major fight that might break us up and I'm wondering if I might be in the wrong here. For some backstory, my boyfriend and I are slightly in a long distance relationship. This has been going on for the past six months due to me being in college. We met in high school and recently reconnected. We talk daily and we see each other about every other weekend. That is, unless I really need to focus on homework or if he has to work. We've been doing really well. Unfortunately, my mother just passed away about a week ago. Now onto the dirty laundry. As I stated before, my boyfriend and I have done great with a long distance relationship the past six months. We have been great with communication and we've had minimal fighting throughout the relationship. Our fighting this past week has been completely out of left field and right after my mother passed away suddenly with no warning. The first night I was completely in shock, like this wasn't really happening. The next few days I felt like I was on autopilot and have been withdrawn from everything, all while trying to plan everything so my grandma and my two brothers didn't have to deal with much while they were grieving. I have always been the one to help my family out in emergency or difficult situations. Plus, I was the only one who would have known her full wishes after passing away. Well, yesterday was her funeral. My boyfriend called me on his lunch break at 11 o'clock because he was unable to be there physically, which I completely understood, and got off completely at 6 o'clock in the evening. He called to check on me when he left work, but I was at dinner and trying to hold it together as much as possible. As a result, I didn't feel my phone vibrate, which I usually don't have on, but it was turned on during the funeral, and I never turned it off. I finally got home at about 10 o'clock at night. Once I got home, I got in the shower, and I was in no rush to call him, because I just needed to be alone for a minute, after dealing with people and my own feelings all day. I was just mentally exhausted, and needed a few minutes alone. I called him at about 11 o'clock at night, and he answered the phone with one simple question. Were you busy, or were you just blatantly ignoring me? I was taken back by this, and simply just responded by saying, excuse me? He then accused me of just ignoring him and shutting him out, even though I've tried to explain to him that I've been on autopilot mentally and I didn't even notice my phone. I apologized at first, but then he kept going on about how upset and disappointed he was that I just ignored him all day when he was just trying to check in on me and how rude I was for ignoring that. He went on this rant for a solid hour. Eventually, I got mad and I said, I don't need this right now, and I hung up the phone. I then turned off my phone so I could just go back to bed, or at least try to. I eventually woke up after a few hours of sleep and turned on my phone, and little did I know I would regret that decision. I was flooded with notifications from him, as well as his brother calling me selfish for ignoring him and turning off my phone. My brother called me a few hours later because my boyfriend has been texting both me and my brothers multiple paragraphs about how rude I was to ignore him all day and then just to hang up on him when he was just explaining how hurt he was by my actions. And now I won't respond knowing he can see me and that I'm reading his text messages because of read receipts. My brothers did stand up for me and I am grateful for them doing so. But at the same time, I'm honestly shocked by this behavior. I'm starting to think that maybe I'm just being overly emotional and responded horribly. So it begs the question, am I the jerk for this situation? You are not the jerk for this situation. If anything, your boyfriend is a massive jerk and he is a terrible boyfriend. The fact that he went in on you for being emotionally disconnected on the day of your mother's funeral and then try and spin it about how he feels and how he's so offended by your actions is so unbelievably toxic. I don't even know what else to say. This guy, in my opinion, is so self-centered and unbelievably toxic for doing this to you that it does not warrant any kind of apology from you. You didn't do anything wrong. And also, how can he not understand that you not being available 
available has to do with the fact that your mother just passed away and you literally just had her funeral the same day. I mean, how unbelievably selfish, condescending, and ignorant can you possibly be to act this entitled in this kind of situation? So honestly, you are not at fault here. Your boyfriend is a piece of garbage for acting like this. And if anything, he should be ashamed of himself. An entitled guest makes a mess, lies to the front staff, and acts generally incredibly hostile. Here's what happened. Last night at the hotel I work at, we had some serious idiots staying with us. They had originally checked in Saturday night, and we really should not have let them stay Sunday because they came in and they smelled terrible because they had been smoking a lot of the herb, if you know what I mean. And this was in rooms where you're not allowed to do that. But housekeeping was already overwhelmed, so the owner decided that we would just let them stay. Late last night, someone came asking for a key to one of their rooms. But unfortunately, this person's name was not on either of the rooms. So the front desk apologized and said that she couldn't provide them a key as their name was not on the room. This person then got argumentative with her and said that the person who rented the room was currently at the club and unable to come provide her ID. They went back and forth, getting more and more irritated at this mysterious guest and the woman at the front desk started getting overwhelmed and started shaking. Finally, the girl who rented the rooms came in asking for a key, apparently not having been at the club at all. She also started being rude towards the front desk, who ultimately had to call the police to have them removed. This morning, when I came in for my shift, the girl I replaced replayed me all of this, and also expressed worry that the people knew her name because someone called an hour after the police left and asked her some questions, trying to get information out of her. So needless to say, she was worried. Today, when housekeeping went to check the rooms, they found out that they had been smoking in it non-stop. There were ashes and debris all over the place. We tried to charge the card on file for the rest of the smoking fee not covered by the deposit, but as expected, they were just a bunch of broke losers. Now, this is where I wish the story would have ended, but there's a lot more after this. About 20 minutes ago, some more news developed that added another chapter to this story. I get a call asking for the manager, and the caller was in luck as I happened to be the manager on duty. She asked if we had an employer whose name was Stephanie. For the record, we don't have someone by that name, so I told her this. She then asked if we have any employees who names start with a letter S, which again, we also don't. At this point, the person on the other line gives up and says that they just need to make a complaint against the girl who was working last night. In fairness, the girl who worked last night, her name does start with an S sound, but I wasn't about to tell the caller this, having realized that it was the person from last night. But I did politely let them give me their version of the events, knowing full well that it's a complete lie. I know better than to stop an opponent from making a mistake. So their tall tale included the friends being refused access to their room, saying that the front desk lady from last night was extremely rude, and that the cops were called for no reason. I already knew that the girl from last night was not rude to them. I watched the security footage from the event, and also, the girl in question doesn't have a mean bone in her body. I don't think she could be rude even if she tried. Anyway, the caller informed me that she wanted at least half of her money back because of what happened. I informed her that she would get nothing back, as I reviewed the footage and knew exactly what had transpired. And furthermore, both rooms had been heavily smoked in. They told me they thought the rooms were smoking rooms because they smelled like smoke at check-in. But she also claimed that they called the desk to let them know that the room smelled like smoke, which I don't know why you would do that if you thought it was a smoking room. I told them no, all of our rooms are not smoking, and the paper they signed at the check-in says as much. Plus, even if it smells like smoke, there were ashes and debris everywhere. At that point, she realized that she had lost and informed me she and her friends wouldn't be coming back. I don't know why she thought threatening me with a good time would mean anything, and I wish I had said, I don't know why you would think we would want you back here, but instead, I just said, you wouldn't be welcome back even if you tried. She eventually hung up, and me and the owner laughed about how dumb they were, and we haven't seen them ever since. I always hate it in customer service when someone just straight up lies to you about what happened just to try and get a deal. You must have a very low moral standard to just blatantly lie after you were a complete nightmare to that poor girl who had to put up with you. Hopefully those people learn their lesson that you can't treat people like garbage and expect to get your way. An entitled customer loses their mind when they aren't given exactly what they want for their hotel stay. Things got so bad that I ended up having to refuse them service and basically told them that they're out of luck. Here's what happened. So I'm working the morning shift and it's already busy as soon as I clock in at 7 in the morning. Five minutes later, I get a call from a guest in room 303 Upon answering,
answering, the guest explains that he wants to book a night in the same room and that he's going to be making a new reservation through a third party right now. So I say, okay, go for it. But when I check our availability real quick, I find that there's no available rooms for his room type. He's sleeping with a single queen bed. However, there are two more double queen rooms available. As I was explaining the issue to him, and as I was about to go through possible workarounds, he interrupted me and said, so you're saying that I have to leave at 11 o'clock and I have to wait until 3 p.m. to get back into this very same room? I'm still thinking about where the miscommunication occurred, where he assumed that that would be the case. I didn't even mention departure times in the conversation. His tone of voice was a blend of angry and entitlement, as he was very belittling towards me. And it's the kind that sends you shaking and makes you think that you got into trouble. I say, no, that's not what's going on. Let me explain. And before I even get a chance to explain, you guessed it, the guest tells me the same thing, repeating himself again, but this time raising his voice. So I have to leave at 11 o'clock just to get into the same room later. I'm paying for this new reservation right now. At this point, he's just angry. With pretty much a sold out night, I'm tired of his antics already, and I've decided to pull the plug on him, seeing as how he was making me emotional at this point. So I say to him, yes, you'll leave at 11, just like you said. And after I said that, I hung up the phone. At this point, I'm looking to see where his reservation is. When a few minutes later, he calls the desk again. He says, can I get transferred to customer service? And before I could even explain who he actually has to call, as this is just the front desk and not some like directory, the guest interrupts me and keeps repeating over and over again, requesting that I transfer him to customer service. And the entire time he was just getting angrier and angrier, before I even could explain that this is not the number for customer service. Eventually, after screaming into the phone, he's the one that hangs up the phone first. At this point, this man is going absolutely insane, which is definitely not good for the hotel. I figure I've already told him that he needs to check out at 11 o'clock, and I'll just make some notes about it in the meantime. About 20 minutes later, I get a call from our customer service line for the hotel. They reference the problem guest and ask me why I am making him check out at 11 o'clock, and then back in at 3 p.m. Keep in mind, the problem guest booked through a third party, so I explain myself. I tell the agent that we are sold out tonight, and the guest was making grand assumptions that I have no control over. I reiterate that the guest is checking out by 11, but I am now refusing service to him due to his bad behavior. The customer service agent says they understand and that they'll explain this to the guest. Meanwhile, I find that the problem guest did indeed make a reservation, an already paid for double queen room from the third party that definitely wasn't his room type. This is not good. At this point, I already refused service to the guest, so I'll have to call him back. When he answers the phone, I tell him that I found his double queen reservation, and before I could tell him that I'm refusing him service, he interrupted me again and said, yeah, I booked that reservation, but I'll be staying in this room. And after that, he says some really bad swear words and hangs up the phone. At this point, it was 9 o'clock in the morning, and the problem guest had kept their room until 11 o'clock a.m. Eventually, this problem guest comes down from his room. His hair is unkept and he has the actual gall to ask for a breakfast bag. He even introduced himself. By the way, I'm the guy from 303 and I won't be leaving my room. I'm just here to get my breakfast bag. At this point, I stifled a laugh. I said, oh, okay, I'm not getting you a breakfast bag. I'm refusing you service, sir. The problem guest just scoffed at me and repeated what I said under his breath. And then he left without saying anything else. And I've got to be honest, I was surprised that he left it at that. And I thought that probably was the end of it. But either way, I at least got my intentions out and I told him that I would not be providing him any service. But unfortunately, that wasn't the end of it. I get another call from our hotel customer service asking why I wasn't giving this problem guest his breakfast bag. So I told them pretty much the same thing, though I definitely added the fact that he swore at me on the phone and was harassing me at this point with these calls. And as a result, I'm refusing service to him. The agent understood, but asked if there's anything we could do to resolve the conflict. I told them that I was willing to cancel and refund the problem guest's reservation if he contacts the third party about it. Eventually, this guy finds his way back to my front desk, and he's leaning against this desk in a defensive posture. He comes up looking apologetic and says, Can we start over? And at this point, I mull it over. But if he really wants to start over, then he has to first hear how he affected me. I look him in the eyes, and I tell him point blank, I didn't appreciate your behavior towards me one bit this morning. He then says, I'm sorry if I was a bit rude but you were being just as bad. Did you know that I just found out that I have cancer and then you refused me service and breakfast? And at this point, he's trying to gaslight me. I then determine that he doesn't want to start over. So I reply and say, you think that you having cancer gives you the right 
to behave like this towards me. The problem guest then begins strafing as he's ranting at me saying, I haven't done anything rude towards you at all. I check the lobby and I see that it's empty. So I explain to him that he swore me on the phone and I emphasize the words that he used specifically. He then doubles down and says that he's just trying to stay here a little bit longer because he has cancer. He then tries to guilt trip me by saying, would you really try and kick someone out who has cancer? And at this point, I'm just absolutely done because I cannot believe that he's put me on the spot. But I figure that consistency is key. I say, yes, I'm refusing service to you specifically for your behavior. We don't have any rooms for you. He yells back at me and says, I'm going to be on the street because of you. I switch the conversation slightly and I say, don't worry about it. I have no problems in canceling your reservation you just made. However, you have to contact the third party that you paid and tell them about this situation so you can be refunded. He tries to claim that it's a non-refundable reservation just to try and skate around the system, but I explain that no, he will get his money back as long as he contacts the third party. With that, he went back to his room. The problem guest bothered me no more. I got a call from his third party and we got this idiot his refund. He left the room in good condition and I think he left at the side entrance because I never saw him again. He started with a bang and ended with a whimper. When it comes to my work, it's not worth arguing with people like this, especially when the night's coming up and I know for a fact that we're going to be busy. The thing is, he probably would have gotten his wish if he wasn't so mean. I would have just happily switched things around for him so he could just stay in his same room. But instead, he decided to act entitled and act incredibly rude and completely inappropriate. That problematic guest is an absolute jerk. If he was just a little bit nicer, he would have gotten his way and he would have been able to keep his room without any kind of fanfare or at least treating this front desk worker like garbage. And the amount of gaslighting and guilt tripping that this guy was participating in was absolutely disgusting. So honestly, good riddance. And for the sake of the original poster, I hope this guy never goes back to that hotel ever again. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And the next time you live stream, use the cream of the crop music. Search cream of the stream on Spotify or whatever platform you use for copyright free music to use for your next stream.